Yes, hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is the Clarets Daily News here on Turfcast. And now I thought it was going to be a bit of a quiet day and it was going to be a difficult one to fill out the show, like a difficult show to, to fill out to around eight minutes. But some news has dropped within the last hour, couple of hours, that Burnley are looking at a move for former Sheffield United centre-back John Egan. Now, you may remember John Egan, he scored against us uh, during the COVID years. And when Sheffield United were first promoted to the Premier League, he was part of a centre-back pairing that was very, very good. He has lost his way a little bit recently, mainly due to injuries, to the point where Sheffield United actually released him. I think at the end of last season... But according to Alan Nixon, and I'll just quickly read the article for you now, he says Burnley are looking at a shrewd move for experienced centre-half John Egan after he left Sheffield United. The Republic of Ireland cap could join Scott Parker's squad as a surprise new addition, but with one eye on more departures from Turf Moor. Egan had an injury hit campaign with United as they went down, but his record down the years has been top class. Blades let Egan go as they cut their payroll following relegation, but now relegated Burnley could take advantage. Burnley centre-half Dara O'Shea has been linked with Brentford and Egan would be a ready-made replacement for him. Now, I'll be honest with you, I did hear a couple of days ago that he's actually been training with the lads. He's at the club, obviously not signed or anything yet. It's probably you know, the management and, and and stuff like that, just taking a look at him to see what it's like, to, to assess any any injuries, any long-term damage that he may have caused during this time at Sheffield United last year where, where he did struggle with injuries. But it's interesting to hear that they didn't let him go because they felt that, you know, he, he had too many injuries or whatever. It's interesting to hear that they let him go because they were cutting back their payroll. It's a good sign for anybody who, who wants to bring him in. But interesting one. I like him. I think he's, he would be a good addition. Do I think he would be our starting centre-back if all our centre-backs are fit and we kept them all that we have now? Probably not. But as Nixon says in the article, Dara O'Shea is, has been heavily moved with the link away recently. So I would suspect that with the likes of Jordan Bayer currently injured, Al Dakil currently injured, and I think... Um, Del Quar's injured as well. So we have a lot of injuries at centre back. And then with O'Shea potentially moving on, we're four centre backs down. So potentially we could be seeing on, no, not on Monday, later in the season, uh, a centre back pairing of, of Esteve and John Egan. And then who knows, hopefully Jordan Bayer can come back from injury and cement his place back in the first team squad as well. Not that there's anything wrong with Egan, but I do feel like Jordan Bayer and Esteve would be a brilliant centre-back partnership and probably would be my favoured one going forward. But yeah, according to Alan Nixon, Burnley are looking at experienced centre-half John Egan, who was let go by Sheffield United at the end of last season. And like I said, I did speak to somebody a couple of days ago that said he has been at Barnfield and training with the lads. So it looks like this one could be happening within, you know, within the next week, I would imagine. Who knows, maybe even before Monday. We do have our third and final official shirt. The third kit has been released and I'm sure you've all seen it by now. But just for those of you that haven't, it's obviously on your screen now. But just so I can describe it to you as well, it is a white shirt with claret and blue trim and a claret monochrome crest and obviously with the claret castor on the other breast. But it's got claret and blue trim. So the collar and the sleeves, as you can see, are claret and blue. Now, I'll just quickly change that picture on screen for you. In fact, I'll put them side by side, these two pictures, because as you can see, the collar and the trim on the sleeves is different on every single shirt. Now, not massively different. Obviously, it's all the same type of pattern, but it's not exactly the same. It's essentially come from a big cloth with that pattern on it, and they've just cut it from that and then put it on the shirts. I quite like that touch. It gives the shirt a bit of uniqueness, a bit of individuality. My only problem is when you look at these two pictures on your screen now and you look at your hands collar and you look at Ekdal's collar, your hands is so much nicer. Like I, If I'm going to go and buy one, then I'm going to be looking for a, a, a better collar um, than, than, than the Ekda one. So it's interesting, but obviously there is that side of it. But I do quite like that touch. And it, I was going to order this one online, but... I want to choose my own collar, weirdly enough. I know it's a bit bizarre, but 
um, just just to make sure I get one that I like, essentially. But I do quite like that touch. And I actually quite like the shirt as well. I did see the club do, I think it was a TikTok or an Instagram of Josh Brownell and Josh Cullen doing a, a game where they talk about, or, or sorry, name EFL clubs and see how many they can, they can name, I think, 90 seconds. Um, and it looked a lot better on them than it does on the pictures. And yeah, I genuinely do really like this shirt. Interestingly though, it didn't go down as well as I thought it did because obviously I saw it and my initial thought were, that's nice, I quite like the claret and blue trim, but it started getting pelters and I think a lot of people were just taking their anger out on other things, which I'm not going to go into and just getting annoyed and, and venting towards the shirt. I do think it's a nice shirt. I actually wish... And I know the club have now addressed it in the recent fan advisory board meeting. I just wish that the sponsor was different on all three shirts. And I don't necessarily mind the 96.com. I'm not this big, massive advocate of never having betting sponsors on the shirt. As I've said before, some of the work that I do is for a quite well-known UK betting firm. So I've got no issue with the betting sponsors. It's just the colours of it. That big gold nine just looks stupid in my opinion. And I think it ruins all three shirts. If you look at the kids' shirts and how dude perfect I've allowed the club to change the colour of the sponsor to match the palette of the shirt, it just looks so much nicer. It genuinely does. But apparently, according to the club at the fan advisory board meeting, as I'm recording this last night, the, the, the members of the fab did ask the club about that and apparently 96.com just said, no, we want our colours to remain the same. I guess it's brand identity, but at the same time, it's a double-edged sword, I guess, isn't it? Because if you allow fans to, sorry, the, the club to change the colour of the sponsor, they could potentially then sell more shirts and then get more, more, more money out of the sponsorship. But at the same time, the majority of the eyes on the the shirt are going to be from tv games and things like that so i guess they just want brand recognition so i can understand it from their point of view but it is a bit of a shame i do believe that the shirts would look so much nicer if the colors of that sponsor were just tweaked a little bit to match the palette of the shirt say for example on that white shirt now that the sponsor was the same light blue that's a light blue in the collar and the same with, I don't know, the pink on the away shirt and, and the blue on the home shirt. It just it just would look so much better. But in my opinion, I actually quite like the shirts this year from Castor. I think the three decent efforts, none of them are worldies like the one from Umbro a couple of years ago were. But they're all three decent efforts and I quite like all three shirts to be honest. But yeah, again, the sponsor ruins it from, well, stops it from being like a, one of the better shirts that we could have had. And it, it, the sponsor just makes it, it turns it into a great shirt, what could have been a great shirt, into a decent shirt. But yeah, the third shirt is out and hopefully we'll see quite a lot of that this season. Elsewhere, and probably going to be the final one I talk about on this show, but Scott Parker has done his first ever pre-game press conference as manager of Burnley Football Club. Interestingly, though, the club didn't stream it live. That could be a Scott Parker decision. That could be something to do with regulations in the EFL. Maybe they don't need to stream it live, whereas in the Prem they do. I'm just thinking out loud here. I don't know. Um, but it's a shame because I do like to watch them live. Uh, they, they used to coincide with my break as well where, uh, at work. So I used to enjoy doing that, going on a break and watching them and then obviously just regurgitating the stuff that I saw in there and sticking it out as a bit of content on Turfcast. But unfortunately, I can't do that anymore. However, if you do want to watch the full interview, it's around 18 minutes long. It is on the club's YouTube channel. So you can have, head over to the club's YouTube channel and watch it on there obviously when you finish watching this. Uh, but yeah, interestingly, he spoke about a lot of stuff in there, including injuries. Uh, Mike Trezor is apparently injured. I'm not sure how much I buy of that, if I'm being honest with you. I was told several weeks ago, as I know a lot of you are already aware, and a lot of people heard it from multiple different sources. It wasn't just me pretending to be ITK. I've never for one second said that that is what I do. But I heard a while ago that he hadn't come back and then not long after that the rumours started coming out that he was injured but I, I did feel at the time it was just sort of like the club touring the party line maybe I'm being too cynical and I'll hold my hands up and say I'm wrong if that is the case just like I did with the design of the away shirt but um, yeah so Trezor's apparently injured apparently he's had an operation to be fair um, so I'm not sure how much they'd make up on that but again but we'll see um Aaron Ramsey, spoke about Aaron Ramsey as well. From what I believe, he could be out up until Christmas minimum, potential really late into the season again. The knee injury is that bad. Um, so that's interesting. It's a shame as well because he, 
had a big future ahead of him. Still does, can come back from it strong. Uh, and Nathan Redmond as well, cousin Nathan, apparently. Obviously, well, we, we know how bad his knee injury is, but apparently he's, he's still got uh, quite a bad knee injury, so it'll be a while until we see him. I'll let you go and watch it for all the main stuff. It's just, it's just the usual pre-match press conference stuff where he talks about Luton, he talks about his thoughts on Rob Edwards, Kenilworth Road, that sort of thing. Other than that, it's all pretty much the usual stuff apart from the injuries that I've just mentioned. Oh, one final thing. He did say that the club will make a late decision on Zeki Amduna because he's um, obviously had an extended break. So I think they need to make a late decision on, on whether or not he's fit enough after the extended break. So interesting. I don't think he's got a knock. I just think it is a case of just just assessing him a little bit more and making a decision on him because of the extended break. And one more thing, Luca Colio shot is available. Obviously, he went off, I think, in the second half in the friendly against Cadiz. There are a few rumours online about him being injured, but no, he's available, so that's good. So, yeah, it sounds like we don't have too many concerns other than the stuff we already knew about. It's not like anyone's picked up a niggle. Obviously, there's still time to do that, but it looks at the minute that we could put out quite a strong squad. But, yeah, I'll, I'll wrap it up here. That's pretty much it from me. Obviously, um, let me know what you think in the comments below. I have, as I've been talking, just heard a little bit more on John Egan as well. Uh, even though even though he is training with the club and that bit is correct, uh, somebody that I've spoken to said that his uh, fitness isn't isn't the best at the minute. So it might, I know I said earlier we could see it soon, potentially not. It might be a while while the club work on his fitness or maybe his fitness won't be good enough because obviously we did see something to do with Andros Townsend towards the end of last season. I'll wrap it up there. Like I said, let me know what you think in the comments below. I think John Egan would be an astute signing if we can get his fitness up. He's obviously very experienced. Doesn't fit the model, but maybe Scott Parker's put in a little bit of emphasis on experience this year and, and asking for players like this. And obviously it's a free as well, which normally means we end up paying a little bit more on wages, but still. But yeah, let me know what you think in the comments below about that. And please let me know what you think of the kit because I'm interested to see what people's thoughts on the kit are. It got a very mixed response. I quite like it. A lot of fab members liked it and did end up getting a bit of grief, but I think it's quite nice. I think it's a nice shirt, but yeah. We'll be back doing the new shows probably not until late next week because obviously we're playing on Monday. So I'll be doing all the fan reaction stuff on Mondays. Then on Tuesday, we'll be doing the full-time show. Then on Wednesday, there's a good chance I'll be working on the pre-game show ahead of Cardiff. But I might not release that until Thursday. I don't know. We'll see. Just, just subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And obviously, you'll see what drops as and when. But a lot of content coming now over the next nine months because the season is about to get started. And it's literally two minutes to eight as I'm recording this now on Friday night. So fingers crossed I go downstairs and I get to see them lot down the road get battered off admittedly a very poor Derby County side but yeah we'll be back with more content next week and over the weekend and fingers crossed we can do a lot of new shows going forward but even if we don't do a lot of the new shows there'll be a lot of content for you next week and the week after